Adam Kimber, welcome to 7.30 South Australia. Thank you very much. I wonder if your great advantage in coming into this job is that you're not Elliot Ness. No one expects Elliot Ness. No one expects anything but Adam Kimber, whoever he is. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I don't think that description seven years ago was at all apt um, and certainly was unhelpful. Um, and there hasn't been any of that sort of um, uh, publicity uh, attract, uh, attack, attached to my appointment. Did the relationship that stemmed out of that, the relationship between the government and your predecessor, Stephen Polaris, did that make you uncomfortable? Uh, I think the amount of publicity about the office made me uncomfortable. I think that um, publicity for our office is not ideal. Uh, I think because... Why, why not? Uh, because uh, that sort of controversy can distract the people in the office uh, from getting on and doing their job. And at the end of the day, their work, their core work remains the same, uh, regardless of what is happening uh, outside of the office but which impacts upon them. Is independence crucial to you? Uh, vital. There is nothing more important than having an independent director. So do you need to be through the media at one another's throats, you and the government, to be independent? No. No, you don't. Um, what you need to do is be independent in terms of your decisions. Um, your independence shouldn't be affected by what people do or don't say outside of the office. Does that mean if you see some legislation come up that you don't like, that you think is dangerous or, or just ineffective, that you wouldn't take to the media to criticise it? Uh, no, that doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, it's very common that uh, we are sent draft pieces of legislation that touch upon our work by the government and we express views about that legislation uh, with a view to helping them. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, they are the ones to make policy decisions. Um, I would hope that in most instances we would have had those discussions uh, well before it was necessary to say anything public about it. But if the government's hell-bent on something that you don't agree with, do you just... Go, go quietly or not? No, of course not. Of course not. Um, but I think the starting point is to make strong representations behind the scenes uh, before the bill even gets into Parliament. And, and you can't have that sort of relationship if you've cast it already as being one where you slag one another off in public. Exactly. Uh, mm. And I think that's important. So why does Adam Kimber want to be DPP? Adam Kimball wanted to be DPP because I thought I had the skills to do the job. I thought I had the support of the people in the office. Uh, and I've got a great commitment to um, criminal prosecution work. W were you asked to apply? Uh, no. Uh, no one asked me to apply. Um, the position was advertised. And like others, uh, I applied. So what do you want to do with it? What, what is the most important thing uh, to fix, if I can put it that way? I think there are a number of things that I'd like to achieve. But, but one of the most important is that it's receive some publicity over time is the delays in the criminal justice system. Uh, we are only one um, party or group that can contribute to improvements in that area, but I think it's fair to say that often things take too long from the moment they get into the court until they're finally resolved. What happens because of that? What happens because of that is that it becomes a long and often more stressful process for the alleged victim of the crime. Uh, it also becomes, in my view, um, not in the interest necessarily of the individual accused because their matter isn't resolved for a long period of time. Sometimes certainty about the next phase of your life uh, can be very important. Do you need more resources to achieve that sort of uh, thing? For as far as the delays are um, coming out of your office, and I take your point that they're not just to do with your office, but as far as they are, do they need to be fixed with resources? Uh, resources would help with that. There's no doubt about that, um, because if uh, the more resources you have, uh, the more you can look at things, um, and uh, sometimes, but not always, you can make a decision uh, much earlier. But at the end of the day, um, I do want to emphasise that we are just one cog in the wheel, and we can only make decisions once we have all of the material uh, that we need to make the right decision. And it's not us that controls uh, the quality of the product that comes into the office and will when you, it comes in. Will you have, well, that's a policing matter, isn't it? Indeed. Hmm. How do you fix that? Well, I think um, there needs you to be... You don't, I suppose. No, we don't. Uh, we don't. But we have a role in assisting the police with um, uh, how they could um, put their briefs together um, earlier and in a better fashion. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they are matters for the police and uh, I don't look to tread on their territory too much. So you're coming into this late in the budget process. Do you get a chance to meet with Treasury to say, look, we need more money? Uh, I've already been involved in some discussions with Treasury over the last few months, um, but obviously Stephen's had the carriage uh, of that much more than I have. Uh, we have made representations as part of that budget process. Uh, I would expect um, that there will be some further conversations about that now that I've taken up the role, but I also don't expect there to be any clarity about that until about the end of May. So in other words, you don't expect to get any money? 
No, I, I don't. I don't. Any extra money? I'm not as negative about it as that. I mean, mm. we do have a budget bid there. Uh, I appreciate that things are difficult for the government at the moment, but I do also appreciate and or believe that um, the attorney has a very clear understanding about the importance of an adequately resourced director's office. Can I ask you, in finishing, about uh, anti-association laws, uh, bikey laws, laws that seek to deal with a, a criminal ele element by um, reducing the, um, some would argue, the, the rights of the accused, putting the onus of, of, of proof uh, on them, um, anti-association laws, as I said. Are you a fan of those in principle? Um, I'm, I'm interested in looking at new ways to deal with the issue of organised crime. I haven't um, made representations to the government or been very closely involved, in fact, not really involved at all in um, the bill that's before Parliament. But forgive me if I'm um, misunderstanding this. This seems to me to be a sort of question that goes to the heart of how you see the law, why you became a lawyer, why you were interested in the law. So a as a general principle, what is your feeling of those sorts of laws? Uh, I think you have to strike a balance between individual rights and the ability of of uh, police to be able to investigate serious crime. Striking that balance is very, very difficult. Do you think we've done it? Um, uh, I think that um, the government have made some very strong efforts to do it uh, in the new bill. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, it's not for me as the director to express you know, final views about policy. Not yet. Not yet. Adam Kimber, a pleasure. Thanks very much and uh, good luck. Thank you very much.